Hello. This is Shiva and Jesus again. Jesus? Jesus? Oh, we're making a video about Jesus. Oh yes, then Jonathan. Yes, welcome to the Matrixers today. We're doing a controversial video about Jesus today. Not everyone has the same attitude or perspective on this. Not even us. Exactly. Yes, well, because our opinions don't correspond 100%, we thought, Let's make a video about Jesus and discuss it a bit and then you can empathize with what appeals to you about it and what doesn't. You can decide for yourself and maybe you have a few hints or a few additions. Exactly. We'd really appreciate it in the comments below. And yes, let's start with Shiva, shall we? Let's get started. Exactly. Have you been able to collect any information about Jesus in your life? Or maybe encounters or any hints how to understand that with Jesus? Because Jesus somehow wandered around the world a lot, despite his story of suffering in quotation marks. It is also the case that many people see Jesus as a positive icon. Yes, and of course you ask yourself that. There are also Jesuits. Or there are associations that say, love Jesus. The church talks a lot about Jesus. So Jesus is already a character who is very popular. Presented positively. Solely in love, etc. And how do you see the Shiva? Yes, I think I'll tell you a joke about my life first. No, I didn't grow up religiously, nor did I have a religion, and yet my worldview regarding Jesus was very religious. So I only ever have that with Jesus' church. No, I don't want anything to do with that. And last year I was in America for a few months. You see churches everywhere. Jesus here, Jesus there, loves Jesus and otherwise. It cannot be. It can't be, it can't be, and I find that all very strange. Yes. And while I was just driving through America, I drove through America with a camper for three months. Has that somehow changed in me? It's easy to dissociate while driving and suddenly information and insights come up. They weren't that serious now about Jesus, but the attitude has changed, and I no longer associated Jesus with the church. I thought, okay, I'm going to look at this separately and not as an icon of the church. And yes, over the months Jesus may not have become a role model for me, but if you really look into Jesus, or what his real name is Yeshua ben Yosef, you can see more in him, of a healer, spirit healer, that we know, she has shared with us that the Yeshua is actually a collection of higher selves that have incarnated on earth to spread the Christ consciousness, the web of Christ consciousness. Okay I then had the information, thought to myself, I'll feel myself into it, and then I often tried to connect with Jesus or to call him in. Yes, he actually often came on interdimensional journeys that I then made with the spiritual healer. I called Yeshua again and made the leap into basic trust with him. So you have to say yes, all the terms are all very religiously influenced, I think. You shouldn't let that fool you too much. Yeshua to me is really. Yes, as she said, an assemblage of higher selves, to me sheer energy, awareness and. Yes, helping one on the path to ones. True self, for me it is, because it represents unconditional love. And I think that's a good way. Ah. Okay. So to you. Jesus is an a religious icon. I guess. Just like me. I guess. Luckily not anymore. 
it's not like either of us are interested in religion in any way. Neither. So we are purely spiritually interested. Jesus is of course the topic right now. Many have asked about it and that's why we would like to mention or emphasize again that we are not related to any religion or anything. We simply look at Jesus as Yes, as a positive figure in the world. And it is not for nothing that many are interested in Jesus or would like to meet him or try to draw from his power. Yes. What did you say the name of Jesus is? Yeshua ben Yosef and what else I wanted to say about it? Yes. If I've been with several people and we've talked about him or called him, he'll actually come. And the spiritual healer I spoke to can perceive and see interdimensionally and I could only feel it. But it's an incredible loving energy. She has seen him. She always talks to him. But in any case he comes and he exists. Okay. Yes. Yes. So I had a few too. So in dissociation I also had some references to Jesus without actually having intended them. So I didn't sit down and say I'm going to dissociate and call Jesus or something or want to know something about Jesus. It actually came in quite spontaneously. So I or I also had dreams. Out of body experiences where I went back in time. And met Jesus in a reality there too. Apparently I myself was sort of. I don't know a tradesman or something at the time and I had always heard about Jesus beforehand and I definitely thought Jesus was a charlatan who only knows how to talk well. He can't do more. I used to too. Yes, I mean back then, in that other life, I thought he was a Oh okay. And at some point I was in a city where I had heard from others that Jesus was there too. And I was like, oh God, now he's already chasing you in this town where I trade. I didn't want to face that at all. And then I went to the marketplace. So it was something like a marketplace. And then I saw the whole crowd standing in a circle. And then I pushed my way through to see what was happening in the middle. And there stood Jesus. And on the floor was a man. I don't know what happened to that unconscious or dead. I do not really know. And Jesus knelt in front of him and put his hands over the man and somehow created or got a golden brown ball out of him. One of the two. I don't know now. I couldn't judge that directly because it was pretty full there. There were a lot of people there. And it was not so easy to be able to see everything. And when I saw that, I immediately recognized that the rumors about Jesus were true after all. As far as his abilities were concerned, a worldview collapsed for me. So when I was the dealer I was back then and then I really, I got really sick, fainted, almost fainted. I lay there on the floor. Then I breathed and just thought that this is impossible. This cannot be. No. So my mind rotated quite a bit in that other life when it saw that. At least if only because he assumed that he was an absolute charlatan. A cheater. Nothing more, no. So that was actually my first encounter that I had with Jesus. And that wasn't wanted in any way or anything. That happened spontaneously. So I haven't met him yet. It was only in my dissociation that information came up or something. But I only had one experience of dissociation, I remember, that involved Jesus, where I could see Jesus as he lived then. And I know some might not like that, but that's where I saw that Jesus had a soft spot for prostitutes. He had a weakness for it and sometimes he liked going to them. Yes. And then it also turned out that Maria Magdalena was there too. I think a prostitute too, I assume, right? I don't know it. Well I mean Maria Magdalena was also a prostitute one of the ones he went to. 
and so I can confirm from what I saw there that Jesus was even married to Mary Magdalene and they even fathered a child. So I was able to see everything there. Yes. But it was many years ago and back then I was surprised to see that. Because nowadays there is already such information about Jesus and Mary Magdalene and such. But at the time I saw that in the dissociation, it was hardly talked about. I had no information about it, except that I was then in the dissociation and that was very interesting. So Jesus was by no means the saint as he is portrayed. No, not at first, but it was a process of development and as far as I know, he just developed and at some point he just shed all vices and the ego to get into pure love consciousness, which he also wants it to be here the earth is. Yes, I'm not so sure about that, because when he already had his apostles together, there is the Gospel of Thomas and in Thomas's Gospel there are, I believe, over 100 guiding principles that Jesus pronounced and one of these guiding principles shows it that Jesus was not a pacifist. That is, he really called for taking up the sword. And that shows me that Jesus was not the holy pacifist, but also somewhere a warrior or somewhere a person who, in case of doubt, would also have called for a revolution. And the times with the Romans and such, I can very well imagine that, because the Romans only see a threat in one person if they could perhaps trigger a revolution. Fine, but that can be said of several of the My father was also a great warrior. And then Jesus ascended, at some point. He also had a huge army of a million people until sometime after many, many years he got tired of it, sat on the mountain, meditated for seven years or whatever he did. and just let it be. So it wasn't his whole life that he was the saint and ascended directly. So it's still a way that he and probably Jesus had to go to and I can only say I can. When I feel Yeshua ben Yosef, I just feel a lot, a lot of love. You can't put it any other way. It's a very, very wide feeling that just flows through completely. And for me it is also one of the ways to get there. Back to the true self. Yes, maybe. Well, I don't know now. I said I haven't met him at the moment. Hasn't presented itself to me yet. I see a danger there too. So I'm not saying Yeshua bin Yosef is the way. But the way to oneself is through love, through unconditional love. Yes. So I see it a bit dangerous with the Jesus and stuff. And that's why, for example, whoever dies now and wants to escape the light trap, the Matrix Guardians will take pleasure in turning into Jesus if you absolutely love Jesus or hope or trust. You should become one yourself. You shouldn't. You shouldn't become dependent or identify yourself with Jesus. Also not as a model, but it's not about Jesus himself, but the idea that he represents. Yes, but you don't really need Jesus for that. No, you don't need much. For me it's all about, he brought this consciousness into the world and that's actually the way I mean. Not Jesus himself is the way for me, but the idea behind it. Yes, so I ask myself how Jesus stands for love, whether this love does not somehow represent a higher frequency. Something like the one pole. That's also the problem in the matrix. Dealing with dualism, dualistic feelings, etc. And if Jesus just radiates love and the devil may be hate or evil or something like that, then we have two poles again. Yes, I don't see that as Jesus radiating love in person, but really as a really very high form of energy as higher selves that represent just that. It's kind of a condition and yes love is a condition. 
It's not about love on earth, dull love, as you so beautifully call it, is it? But for me it's just a state and when you feel this state. Yes, can't I see, feel, perceive, recognize anything dualistic? In no way anywhere. Yes. That's good too. Faith of love on earth, love, hate, good, bad, but not in the case. If I can feel it when he's there, then there's nothing that impressive. Yes, maybe because you only perceive one pole? No, in this case, love has nothing to do with polarity. I don't know. So, because why would anyone want you? Why would I want to go to someone who absolutely radiates love? But only to escape from the other pole, which I don't like. Can you do it? But it doesn't have to be that way. That's why I hate the world. That's why I want to go to Jesus and I don't want his love. No, I hate the world. Maybe I'm dissatisfied with the world. I suffer so much and that's why I would like to be in the state of love so that I don't have to suffer anymore. That may be the case for many. But for example, the inner earth, there is a quantum computer. We're making another video about the inner earth, so we'll mention that again. But they have a quantum computer in Christ consciousness so that people can learn to go into Christ consciousness, even if that is of course shaped by Jesus in the world. But I don't see that as religious. For me, the Christ consciousness is simply love consciousness, so that they can get there and learn that. And that would be at least one reason for me to visit the inner earth. For this quantum computer. Yes, for me Christ consciousness is again a religious term why use religious terms? It's a religious term, like angels. Here we are again. Angel. Christ. Jesus. Do you understand what I mean? Yes, I've used it now because I don't have another one. I think you can also call it love consciousness. So for me, if that's the case, I don't really care what it's called. The message behind it, or the idea, that's what it's all about for me. Yes, yes, as I said. As I said, I have nothing, no woe, nothing against even, but I see it that way. The whole matter is a bit ambivalent because Jesus, Christ consciousness, the angels are not far away either. And that's too dualistic for me? No, you can fall in love there. And most people might want to fall in love because they were suffering or were dissatisfied with their life, or didn't get something right and see themselves as victims. And I'm thinking people right now, I'm not addressing you with that, or something. But I think there is a danger that many people tend to see themselves as victims of certain situations and then want to go to someone who can do it better. Yes, that, but you have to differentiate between these religious ideas and what really stands behind them. So then we go to Jesus or someone and say, you, I'm not that capable, you're more competent than me, do it for me. Yes, no, I wouldn't see it that way at all, just, I would just, it's just about the idea. To this idea of love. Not because I'm feeling bad or because I'm a victim but because it's a very high frequency that greatly expands consciousness. You have escaped the ego with it. Yes. Yes, but with that we support the whole matrix system, right? No, actually quite the opposite. Why? Because in the true self you are in love and then you are out of the matrix. Yes, if so, if that works, I don't know it. So, you will see. We'll see, yes. So, this is it. But we'll get to the topic of how to leave the matrix later. Yes. But, as I said, I have, it was definitely a revolution in its day, also in people's minds. Definitely. He must have moved a lot. And if he hadn't made a difference, then they wouldn't still be talking about him today. 2,000 years later, in any case, but you also have to remember that 2,000 years ago people were much more religious. The visits of the gods on earth, gods in inverted commas, weren't that long ago either. 
no, no. So they were all very religious and very believing in God and everything had a very Christian or very religious tinge. Yes, yes, so I see both sides. I can also understand your side, how you see it. Yes, I also see both sides, but I don't agree with the religious side. Hmm, well, I mean, many might, well, think that's how it was, that they're just taking Of course, you shouldn't ignore that either. And by doing so, one presents oneself as a victim or as not creating one's reality by taking refuge in someone else who does it better. Yes, it's not about refuge. It shouldn't be a refuge or an escape from one's own shadow. You can maybe transform love, but you have to face your shadow first. Yes, love is another topic that could be discussed. The term love is exactly the same as how love is defined. What love is meant when someone speaks of love? Then everyone comes up with their interpretation and sees it all very differently. So you would have to invent a new term. Exactly, for the Christ consciousness, in my opinion, a new term would have to be found, a value-free one. But anyway, a very interesting topic, and Jesus loves you, is a buzzword, especially in America, and yes. What then? What other catchphrases are there that you have seen in America? Jesus loves you and who else? Yes. Everyone has to decide for themselves how to look at it. But of course we are happy. Maybe it will spark a discussion. Exactly. What else do I want to say? Of course, Jesus is not there to set you free. He is not your savior. That's exactly what I No, because you have to redeem and free yourself. Jesus didn't die on the cross for you to take away your suffering. You have to go the same way that he already had. Face your own shadow. Expand your own consciousness. That's what comes to mind now. Yes, exactly. Of course, Ramda said that too. He said it too, also in relation to Jesus. Yes, Jesus is your savior, right? He just isn't. He is not the savior and he cannot set you free. That's even what I'm saying. He is not the savior in the matrix and he cannot set you free because he is in the matrix himself. Is that what it's supposed to mean? One does not know. No. But then you become a victim of the situation. And you need a savior. Therefore it does not mean that Jesus is in the matrix. Because he already makes statements in this. I am not your savior and I cannot set you free. He could. But it's not his job. You just don't know that. That's your guess. This is of course all conjecture what we discuss in. Yes. Everyone. Is a self-creator. Otherwise it would be a kind of dependency on Jesus and I don't think that would be conducive to leaving the matrix. I rely completely on Jesus and if Jesus doesn't come then I would be lost. One is self-responsible and one and of course you can get support. One can. Yes, serve may be the wrong word, but it may be possible. But don't use someone else and expect it to put me out of my misery. Cause I'm so lost and a victim. For me this has nothing to do with the matrix itself, but with the attitude towards life and the responsibility for being a creator. Oh well, so I mean I saw this once in a dissociation that Jesus wasn't crucified. And. That the crucifixion is actually an invention of the archons. I've heard that too. That's also an invention of the archon. The thing with the cross. That Jesus died on the cross as a memorial. That the archons took this as a memorial and said you see what happened to who tried to leave the matrix. Look what happened to that. He is now hanging on the cross and has suffered. Do you really want that? Do you really want to follow in Jesus' footsteps or something? 
So that's a bit behind it. I saw through a dissociation. And then I have to say that I think Jesus must have managed to escape from the matrix by means of dissociation. And that's because the archons have changed that. Namely that Jesus died on the cross. He didn't manage to get out. After all, that's what he was. I have to say, so Jesus must have actually managed to get out of the matrix. So if Jesus appears at the light at the light trap, then he certainly can't be the real one. That's exactly what's out there. So maybe I could come to an agreement. There are many projections of Jesus floating around, mentioned before in the video of all the sleepers who have fallen into eternal sleep on the intermediate level because they are waiting for Jesus the Redeemer. They sleep in eternal sleep, waiting for the image that they know from their lives and their imagination. Now wait and all the spirits or spirit guides have to show themselves exactly in the image or projection of Jesus when you pick them up. Jesus doesn't go there personally with each individual, because there are an incredible number of people who are asleep and you can't wake them up in any other way than by means of projection, i.e. as a projection by Jesus. There's this movie too. Heaven really does exist. There's a boy who has a near-death experience and when he came back he said he had met Jesus and then he described Jesus. And of course he looks exactly like you know him from any pictures. With his long caftan and fair skin and light curly hair etc. And who did he really see? Projection? Did he see Jesus or not? Or who? Or when someone calls Jesus? Is that then the Jesus outside the matrix or is it just a kind of echo of him that remains in the matrix as a signpost in quotation marks, so to speak? I always perceive him as a luminous being. If we call him once, then it's just luminous. That said, I think I doubt he has any likeness at all. That said, I doubt he has looks. However, I'm not interested in that. I only see him as a figure of light. However, you can feel it more than see it. Yeah, well I tend to look at it psychologically, a little bit. You long for Jesus etc. In reality, however, one longs for one's own wholeness and then projects that onto Jesus, because Jesus is whole, he can only be whole. So you project that onto him and, well, but an exciting topic with Jesus in any case. Yes, interesting topic. Not that exciting for me I have to say. For me very much, so for me it's exciting, not that exciting for me. But I still find it interesting because so many people believe in it. Yes, Jesus, love, and you don't know, at least, it's not a main element of my path, and but if he ever meets me, then I bring him greetings from you. Okay, good, but I can do that myself, N, A, do you have anything else to say, had, other exciting experiences with Jesus? I don't know anything anymore. Actually, yes. But interesting topic. Well, we can write what you think about Jesus, what you think of it and what your opinion is about it. There might be some interesting discussions here as well. And, and. Yes. Glad you watched. Thanks for that. Yes. Give us a like maybe you liked it. Taking a completely different topic than always pure spirituality or something. This little discourse may have appealed to one or the other. Especially since it was asked for. Yes, then we wish you all the best and see you next time. Until next time, bye.